HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zachwa. Happy Feast of Pentecost, of First Fruits. We hope you all enjoying the feast. And thank you for taking the time to join us for this feast day today. Going to get into a little discussion about understanding the fruits that are to be brought forth for the Feast of First Fruits. You got anything, Zachwa? Before we go, no, I'm ready. We can go ahead and go. All right, let's get to it. Now, firstly, why do we celebrate first fruits? Let's find out in Jubilees chapter 6, verse 15, please. And he gave to Noah and his sons a sign that there should not again be a flood on the earth. He set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy it all the days of the earth. So we're renewing this covenant every year. That's what we're celebrating it for. But what is the covenant that we are renewing? Can you read Jubilees chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 and then jump to verse 4? And then jump to verse 15 to 18, please. All right. Uh, Jubilee chapter 6, verse 1. And on the new moon of the third month, he went forth from the ark and built an altar on that mountain. And he made atonement for the earth and took a kid and made atonement by his blood for all the guilt of the earth. For everything that had been on it had been destroyed, save those that were in the ark with Noah. Okay, that's what he did in the third month. We're in the third month. What else transpired in the third month? Continue in verse 4, please. And the highest smelt the goodly savor, and he made a covenant with him that there should not be any more a flood to destroy the earth, that all the days of the earth, seed time, and harvest should never cease, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night should not change their order, nor cease forever. So the covenant is that he would no more destroy the earth by a flood. Now, where is this festival celebrated? Verse 18, please. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation to the days of Noah. 33 jubilees in one weeks of years. So once it was revealed to Noah, who has celebrated it in the earth? Let's see. Continue reading, please. And Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one week of years, to the day of Noah's death. And from the day of Noah's death, his sons did away with it until the days of Abraham, and they ate blood. But Abraham observed it, and Isaac and Jacob and his children observed it up to thy days. And in thy days the children of Israel forgot it until... You celebrated it anew on this mountain. So the feast is a feast for the children of Israel and the children of Abraham by faith and through faith. And it has been renewed since the Israelites celebrated it on the mount. Now we see us in the third month. What day was it that Allah is referring to that the feast was celebrated anew? Can you read Jubilees 1 verse 1 and 2 please? And it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt, in the third month, on the sixteenth day of the month, that Elohim spake to Moses, saying, Come up to me on the mount, and I will give thee two tables of stone of the law and of the commandment, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. So the feast is the sixteenth of the third month. And we were given the law during the feast. 
Can you read Jubilee 6, verse 20 to 22, please? And do thou command the children of Israel to observe this festival in all their generations for a commandment unto them. One day in a year in this month they shall celebrate the festival, for it is the feast of weeks and the feast of first fruits. This feast is twofold and of a double nature, according to what is written and engraven concerning it celebrated. For I have written in the books of the first law, and that which I have written for thee, that thou shouldest celebrate it in its season, one day in the year, and I explain to thee its sacrifices, that the children of Israel should remember and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month, one day in every year. So here we are, for these reasons, celebrating the feast today on the 16th. There was a reason we received the law during the Feast of First Fruits. Let's look into it so we can understand. Can you read Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 17, please? And it came to pass that when thou ledest his seed out of Egypt, thou broughtest them up to the Mount Sinai. And bowing the heavens, thou didst set fast the earth, movest the whole world, and madest the depths to tremble, and troublest the men of that age. This time was where the first fruits were celebrated in the third month at Sinai, when you read the book of Exodus. Continue reading in verse 19, please. And thy glory went through four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind, and of cold, that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob, and diligence unto the generation of Israel. So he came down for the feast, to give us the law and diligence for our generations. All right, now let's jump to Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 30 and 31, please. And thou spakest, saying, Hear me, O Israel, and mark my words, thou seed of Jacob. For behold, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you, and ye shall be honored in it forever. The law was given so that we should bring forth the fruits of it, for fruit unto Allah I am. Continue, please, in Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 20. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. So our hearts not being in the right place hinders us from bringing forth the fruit that Allah is looking for to come forth from his law. So when our hearts are right with Allah we struggle to keep and observe the law and ordinances of Allah Hayyam. Second Ezra 9 and 32 to 37, please. But our fathers, which received the law, kept it not, and observed not thy ordinances. And though the fruit of thy law did not perish, neither could it, for it was thine. The law is spiritual, and the fruits of it are spiritual too, since life is in the commandments, as it is Allahim's, so it cannot perish or pass away being living and eternal continue please yet they that received it perished because they kept not the thing that was sown in them continue please and lo it is a custom when the ground hath received seed or the sea a ship or any vessel meat or drink that that being perished wherein it was sown or cast into, that thing also which was sown or cast therein or received doeth perish, and remaineth not with us, but with us it hath not happened so. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which received it. Notwithstanding the law perish not, but remaineth in his force. It cannot die as it is the life-giving word of Allah Hayim, so it can't be destroyed. And as you see from what Ezra explained, you take something and put it inside a vessel, 
if the vessel perishes, what you put in there is going to perish. But the law, it hasn't happened that way. As the law is eternal, even though it's been put into our vessels. And it helps you understand when Paul speaks about the Gentiles who have not the law. That means they didn't have the law of animal sacrifices. I mean, the law of atonement for sacrifices. But being a law unto themselves, because Elohim's law is in the heart of man. The spirit of Judah talked about the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit being in every man. We still have that in us to turn unto and make the right choices. Um, and Yache was on the same accord with the doctrine of Allah I am that the law doesn't perish and isn't perishing, but it's living and we have to keep it to enter the kingdom. Can you read Matthew 5, verse 18 and 19? Of course, if you don't have anything there. I'm good. Oh. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I'm sorry, Zach, but I got to correct myself. He Go gave ahead. the... He gave the law unto the children of Israel. The law has been put into us. It's not in every nation. That's why we have a cutoff time, and that's why if we don't get it right, we're going to perish in the end. But the Gentiles, they weren't given the whole law. So they have up until the end, and the grace even at the end for them. To correct myself. Sorry about that. What do you exactly mean the law has been put into us? When he this when he came down and gave his commandments, he said, Hear me, O Israel, and mock my words, thou seed of Jacob. We've been commanded by name, as David spake of, to keep the whole law. So that law of the commandments he put in us to bring forth fruit in us. And that means we have the responsibility to do it because he, he gave it to us. Whereas the Gentiles, he didn't give them the whole law. They have law because Noah gave them the commandments to observe. But it's not the same for the children of Israel, as David spake of, because the love wherewith he had love for our fathers and such. We're held to more accountability with him because that law was given to us. Right, so what you're saying is, it's because the law was given to the children of Israel that the children of Israel are held at a higher standard than the Gentiles. Therefore, they have to get it right by a certain cutoff date what the Gentiles have until the end, if Allah permits it. Yes, that's correct. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise Allah for that correction. Now, as Yache spake of here, he came at this time when he came into the world, he said he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he was explaining this, that the law isn't going to pass away till all be fulfilled. And whoever shall break and teach others to break the least of the commandments will be esteemed least in the kingdom. So from the prophets explaining the law has its force and does not perish, Christ confirmed it to be true and explained that none shall pass till all be fulfilled and breaking it or teaching others to break the law will lead to having an unfavorable name in the kingdom. We have to be mindful to bring forth good fruit unto Allah from his law for him to have respect unto our offering and us as people. Can you read Luke chapter 6 verse 43 to 45 please? A good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doeth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, 
nor of a bramble bush gather their grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Thank you. No. Our heart being good will help us bring forth good from our mouth and will also show in our actions. That is something we have to hold fast as true to help us grow. If we see we're doing something or speaking something that's contrary to Allah, I am, we have to be honest with ourselves that there's an area of growth we have and something we need to work out within ourselves to perfect our walk. Can you read Luke 8 and 15, please? But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So being honest with self and Allah and others, making our heart good and keeping the word of the law that we hear to bring forth the fruits from it, being patient with ourselves to grow will profit us. But not taking the time to correct our hearts to bring forth the good fruits of the law won't get us respect from Allah. We can look at Cain for an example of this. In Jasher chapter 1, verse 14 to 16, please. And the boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession in the land. And Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel a keeper of sheep. And it was at the expiration of a few years that they brought an approximating offering to Ahia. And Cain brought from the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought from the firstlings of his flock, from the fat thereof. And Elohim turned and inclined to Abel in his offering. And a fire came down from Ahia, from heaven, and consumed it. And unto Cain and his offering, Ahia did not turn. And he did not incline to it, for he had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before Ahia. And Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on account of this, and he sought a pretext to slay him. So we see you. Yeah, and his heart wasn't right, and his work showed it, since he couldn't bring forth the good fruits of the law to offer a right offering according to the law, but offered what was right in his own heart. Our heart has to align with Allah by viewing his law as the right mode of action that we follow to avoid another law leading us away from him in our body and our minds and our hearts. In our thoughts. Since the law is living and has force, it's not the law that hinders us from doing right, but it's the spirit of sin at work in us, bringing forth its fruits unto death by leading us to work contrary to Allah law of life. Can you read Romans 7, verse 5 and 6, please? If you don't mind, I got something. I should have known. Should have thrown the line out there. <laughs> it's all good, man. You missed, you missed the mark. It's okay, man. <laughs> My apologies. It's all good. Um, there's two parts. Um, one, Abel brought forth the firstlings of his flock from the fat thereof. Like, Abel gave Elohim what Abel held dear to himself. He gave him the best of what he had. And that is what we have to have to be followers of Elohim. We can't keep the best that we have to ourselves or what we hold dear to ourselves as Cain did. We're supposed to give the best to Allah. So if we have things that, that, and this is how things tie together, when we have like the rich man that Yache said, give all thy belongings away and follow after me. When we hold those things that we hold valuable to us, 
and we're not willing to let it go or to give it to Allah Hayyam, then we become as Cain. We give the inferior fruit and keeping the superior fruit for ourselves of what we are holding dear to us. So it's it's very important that we are giving our all or our best to Allah Hayyam always and not giving our best to something else. Now, it's a, it's a great learning lesson in this story because after Cain didn't give his best to Allah Hayyam, he turned to anger or jealousy, which stemmed from the spirit of hatred to his brother Cain because he didn't want to let go of what he felt was superior to him to give it unto Allah Hayyam. And because he didn't want to let it go, the spirit of anger and hatred and jealousy could enter into his heart. So it's our decision whether or not we're going to let it go and we're going to give our best to Allah Hayyam. And that's the decision that we all have to make. And that is technically a stronghold. That's what a stronghold is. It's something that you hold very dear to you or something that you esteem very highly in your life or for possession and you can't let it go. So we can really put things in perspective of real life where these stories that we're hearing from times past really are the same stories that we're dealing with each and every day though it may have been a different time period so i'm with you casa very good thank you for us if that was something that touched for us moving forward as king had the opportunity to do we can confess our fault and put the work in to bring forth that right fruit, that good fruit unto Allah Hayyam and give him what's his due. Yeah, got to be selfless. Because you can't be selfish in this walk. You can't just say, okay, this is what I want and I'm going to hold fast to this. No, I have to be selfless, giving myself unto Allah Hayyam to be a good servant. A, good, a servant is selfless. A selfish servant isn't a good servant. So they don't go together. And, I, you know, I, I this is one of the quotes I quote in my house to my children all the time. The way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. So if I'm not giving my best to Allah it's because I don't give my best in other areas of my life. But if I give my best, if I start giving my best to Allah Hayyam, or I start giving my best to everything that I do, then it's going to carry into everything that I do. So we're supposed to be giving our best fruits. So we're supposed to be doing everything the best that we can and have that pattern of good works. There's no way we're going to be lazy and slack in an area, but then excel in another one. Those those attributes are still going to play in different parts of your life because that's what you're programming your mind and your and your body to to and how to operate. But if you actually start changing that and start putting forth the work and doing your best at everything you do, every little thing you do, it's going to start carrying into everything that you do. And then it's going to become a pattern. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Touching back on understanding is the spirit of sin that work in us that bring forth the fruits unto death to lead us away from Allah Hayyam. Can you read Romans 7, verse 5 and 6, please? 
For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So we see that now Christ came to give us a fresh start to reverse this process by his sacrifice, by working to do right, by faith in his body and blood, instead of carrying the guilt of the bulls and rams blood that couldn't atone for our sins or clear our conscience. Can you read verse six, please? Yes. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead where we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. That letter, the oldness of the letter was the animal sacrifices that held us in bondage because we didn't have a true atonement for our sins, so we were dead in them. But Christ being the atonement for us through his body, now he gave us the opportunity to serve in newness of spirit, fulfilling the law through the spirit, the law of sacrifices, that is. Verse 4 of Romans 7, please. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Allah So we are dead to the law of animal sacrifices for atonement by the body of Christ as a sacrifice for atonement that we may be truly atoned for and united unto Christ to bring forth fruit by his spirit in us, overcoming the spirit of sin through good works to bring forth fruit unto Allah. So, hmm. knowing this, by the spirit of Christ working in us, we are supposed to be preparing our hearts through investigating the deity to do the good works of the law so that the fruits of the law may be sown in us to bring forth that fruit that Allah had desired for us to do so that we may be protected in these end times. Can you read 2 Baruch 32 and 1, please? But as for you, if you prepare your hearts so as to sow in them the fruits of the law, it shall protect you in that time in which the mighty one is to shake the whole creation. This is essential. I'm going to run some by yet. This understanding, if it is correct, to help me here. Allah, he gave the law. He put the law in us, in the children of Israel. But he had mercy. He knew what we would do. He waited until the time to send forth his son to put the spirit in us to be able to keep the law and bring forth fruits in it. Well, no, because there were many people that brought forth fruits in the, in the Old Testament. Um, the, the law of animal sacrifice was carnal. It was supposed to allow us to see that every time that we did something wrong, we were we were dying or we were killing ourselves. That's why the animal had to die before us. But it it didn't purge the heart because if a person's heart was hardened, they wouldn't have any love for the animal either. So the animal would die before them and they would go on with their hardened heart, not changing. Thank you, you're right. People had been doing it. So here, yeah, his spirit was there with those who were doing it from before. Praise the Lion. So they just couldn't see Yahche in it. They couldn't see the spirit in it. All they seen was the carnal ordinances and looking up rightly before men. That's what Paul talked about in Corinthians, where the veil was over the heart 
not being able to see the end of the law was actually speaking about Christ. Right. I mean, we're here. It's, it's still the same spirit here to this day. I mean, yeah. this is all the religions of the world. To look right in the sight of men, but not actually bear the fruit of it. Not understand that we're doing it to our own hurt. Right. Being desensitized, having that, as Paul talked about, having our conscience seared with a hot iron, being insensitive to what we're really doing through our pleasure and what we do, or comfort in what we do. I mean, look at Cain. He was so engulfed in the comfort that he was willing to take his own brother out so that he wouldn't have to be held accountable. Yeah. If I get rid of my brother, then... Who's going to offer that offering that Elohim likes? Like, then he's going to have to bear with mine. I mean, that's the mindset. Like, and that's the mindset the same even to this day with many people is they're looking at everyone else instead of looking at themselves. So they say that person isn't doing right. This person isn't doing right. I'm doing this. I'm doing such and such and such. Though I may not be doing good over here or over here, but I'm doing well enough that I'm, I feel like I'm better than that person. So I'm good. And then when you come across somebody who's actually doing right, it pricks you. And then you have to find some fault in that person. I mean, we're dealing with the ways of the world. So think about it. I mean, we're dealing with the ways of the world. And people that's in the world can't see themselves. Just as Cain couldn't see himself. So if they can't see themselves, they can't see you either. They can see what you're doing right, but they can't see you clearly. They only see what's right in their own sight. So you have to be mindful of that when dealing with yourself, dealing with another person that there may be something I'm blinded to when it comes to me. And I can't see it because I have too much pleasure in it. Or I'm holding it too dear to myself or superior. Whereas I will give Elohim inferior fruit because I want to hold on to my pleasure. And that pleasure trickles into all your works trust me if you hold something that dear to you it's going to trickle into other works and other areas of your life so that's why it's so important for us to to really examine and see ourselves so that we can see what we need to clean that's why when Yache said when they come forth and, and, and the spirit comes back and it sees it swept clean and garnished like we have to be able to see ourselves in order to clean our vessel no one else can clean our vessel for us of course Yache is doing the work in the person or in you but he's doing the work he's trying to get you to see yourself so that you can actually 
come forth and look for an answer or the solution to actually cleanse it and actually put in the work. So just being mindful of how the world operates and understanding how you once operated. If you have come out of many different things that was a struggle for you or a stronghold for you or something that you hold dear or precious to yourself, you know how blinding it could be. So you have to walk in that wisdom with others and you also have to be mindful of that when it comes to yourself to make sure that you're seeing things clearly and not blinded yourself. So this will work. You got anything on that, Casa? Find you explained seeing all things through the eyes of Christ or through the spirit of Christ. Because you explain in humility and meekness. And um as you explain the correct understanding of the um, of Christ's spirit being sent and his and the law being given and people had been doing it from old time. Interestingly, those people that had done right in the law through the spirit of Christ of old time, they could see Christ in spirit. But we who were carnal and couldn't see him, couldn't see what the law of sacrifices was showing us or helping us understand that we were doing to ourselves because we couldn't see Christ or see his spirit. Christ came into the world in the flesh to show himself in the flesh to help bring us out of the flesh back into the spirit to see everything through him, in him, by him, and we're in the world here in these times where it's the same struggle. And unless we humble ourselves as children and get to the place of looking for him in everything, looking for him in ourselves, the humility, asking him to help us see ourselves and help us see others through him. As you talked about getting over that pleasure, because... A pleasure can simply be liking to have my own perspective or my own view. Mm -hmm. And that right there, a double mind can attain unto this salvation. So, when Baruch talking about preparing our hearts to sow in them the fruits of the law, we have to prepare our hearts to see Christ in everything and look for him in everything. Look for what he wants what he wants us to see, what he wants us to do, what he wants us to understand so that we could actually be a vessel that he can operate in, inhabit, that he can change. You said no man can change us, change our hearts for us or something along that line. There's Christ doing it, but we have to be willing participants because he knocks. He isn't just busting in there. We have to open that door. he's gentle yeah, um, hold on I'm about to read I think it's in Isaiah yeah it says um, Isaiah chapter 1 and 18 it says come now and let us reason together saith the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. So it is a choice. We have to choose to be willing and obedient. That's why he said if. So it is something that we have to choose and something that we have to set forth and do our best at. It's interesting. By doing our best unto Allah, it, it teaches us to do our best in other areas of our lives. Like, I can attest for that my own self. 
just putting forth my best to do what Allah is telling me to do and to really strive for it, it's helped me in other areas of my life. It's helped me in music. It helped me with my family. Um, it's helped me be a better husband, a better father. Just because I'm putting forth my best at something, I started putting forth my best at other things too. And I get to bear the fruit of it. You know? Mm -hmm. Man. So, I hope that gives you some inspiration to do all things given that superior fruit as Abel unto Allah and to everything that Allah places in your hands, taking care of everything, giving your best, not taking things for granted, being thankful. It works. Investigate the deity. It works. All right. Yes, I'm hiring for that. We hope you all enjoy the Feast of First Fruits and this edification to help for perspective and goals in bringing forth the fruits of First Fruits that Allah may accept us and have respect unto us and our living sacrifices unto him through our Lord Yache. And with that, we bid you all chalam and peace and blessings be upon you in the name of our Lord Yache. Peace. Chalam. HRC, 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 HRC,